Today's episode is brought to you by Organifi. Organifi is an organic superfood supplement line that makes quality, trusted nutrition convenient and accessible. Their most popular product, Green Juice, solves the problem of juicing greens on the go. Just add water, drink, and let your body soak up the benefits. Visit Organifi.com, that's O-R-G-A-N-I-F-I.com, to learn more about an exciting offer for you, our podcast listeners. Today's show is brought to you by HelloFresh. If you're like me and look at the Food Network and all these channels and watch all these gourmet meals and just lust after them, let's just be real, you're lusting after them. Guys, we have a solution for you. HelloFresh does all the shopping, the planning, and delivery. So all you have to do, guys, is put this meal together, and they give you the instructions as well, so you can create the gourmet meals in the luxury of your own home. So use the code SUCCESS30. SUCCESS30. Just go to HelloFresh.com and use that code SUCCESS30 to get $30 off your first week of HelloFresh. So make sure you check it out. And now, to today's show. I wake up every single day, I am who I say I am. And I get what I get because I live in beast smoke. Stop being gazelle, you're not average. You're not even good, you were born to be great. What's going on world, welcome to another edition of the Secret to Success podcast. I'm your host CJ, joined as always by the Bayesian sensation, Mr. Carl Wesley Phillips. What's going on? And doctor, and then by doctor, I mean doctor for real this time. We'll explain why. Dr. Thomas. For real, for real. For yes. real, for real. Yes. Bless, um, man. The weather is gorgeous out here in Michigan. Oh, man. Uh, that is a, a wonderful thing, which explains why you're there. Because um, we haven't right. seen, seen you there in some time. Uh, I just wanted to start off this podcast, man, just giving a huge shout out. And um, I, I guess just a, 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 a thank you to uh, King James, okay? Uh, King James. For just proving everything that I said. <laughs> Shout out to everybody who got worked up, man. We got more emails, texts, calls. You, God. Thank d- you dirty for listening. mother lover. Y'all, Thank uh, you for listening. Y'all, y'all enjoyed that debate quite a bit, but uh, LeBron has been on the tier since then, but we're not going to rehash that. Why? Because he said he was done talking about it, and he owes Carl $1,000 hey, if he brings it back up. I'm trying to bring it back up, y'all, so if y'all got dollars. anything that y'all could get, either start it again. Let's get it. I need that $1,000. Yo, and Let's shout out to everybody out there who, like, um, who, who you got money on the game. I'm not sure if you oh, and LeBron wow. like best friends oh, wow. or like <laughs> you and Jordan went <laughs> to school money, together. Man. But I got some nasty emails. Like, I'm talking about, they like, on my (laughs) head, like... Don't send me none of those. I'm like, yeah, no, bro. You know, they send them straight to me. They find find my my email and they send them straight to me. But I'm like, yo, I'm like, at the end of the day, I don't got no money on this. I'm going to bed tonight regardless with a a smile on my face. Uh, Well, (laughs) hey, hey, I, I feel them, though, if they are true Bull fans and they follow Mike throughout all his career. Oh, uh, you know what, though? I don't like you. about them true Bull fans, because my brother was one of them. And he was a true Bulls fan until uh, Jordan left. And then he was a, a oh, true yeah, no LeBron <laughs> fan. And true, and true. Uh, the that's, why I said, that's why I said a true Chicago Bulls Yeah, and, I'm not, Bulls and that's fan. the crazy thing yeah, everybody keeps texting it. me. Don't get it twisted. I am a Pistons fan. Like, don't get it twisted. If, if LeBron and them played the Pistons right now, I'm cheering for the Pistons, no questions uh, asked. And I'm already mad at the but, Pistons for losing one when they should have beat him, and he probably should only went to like oh, yeah, six or true. seven. Yeah, that's true. And they just went on ahead and uh, Chauncey better say something to me next time I see him about what happened. <laughs> we, yeah, he owe us a chip. There's no question. We should have got two out of that squad uh, for sure. Two. Um, but we didn't, and uh, it's all good, man. But uh, anyway, welcome on in the podcast. For those of you who are listening from around the world, we thank you for listening as always. And I want to um, just take the time to acknowledge our senior member of this podcast. Senior. Dr. Douglas Thomas, who hey, actually... ARP, am I close to getting my ARP card? Well, we <laughs> had another A. That's a, a. That'll be a- 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 ARP. A- you got the a- ARP, a- which is the baby one they give you before right, you get right the now. ARP. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? So I probably got the ARP right, right now. Oh, yeah, yeah. right now. You're yeah, good to go. This, you can get yeah. uh, 15% off your popcorn at the movie oh, theater right now. My mom be using that for real. 
Like it's a charge card, bro. She oh, pulled that why song. Not? Wherever we go, she uh, pulled that song. You put your time out. in. Yeah. Oh, you put your time in. You deserve it. Um, I think it was at the gas station and she pulled it out one time. I'm like, <laughs> I don't know if they give you enough for it at the gas station. <laughs> Unlet it. <laughs> she whipped that joker out. I'm not mad at her. Uh E. I'll catch Carl. I'll catch up with you about your week weekend. Uh, but weekend. we want to hear about this graduation, man. Et, yes, sir. Eric Douglas Thomas, the high school dropout, twelve years to get a four-year degree, well, sleeping in fall. abandoned buildings, homeless Bad. high school dropout, mother got pregnant at seventeen, and was the commencement speaker for Tennessee State University, man. In all seriousness, man, I'm proud of you. I know you said that that was a goal of yours. You wanted yes. to start doing commit commencements and uh, you did it. So tell us about it, man. How'd it go? Oh, uh, bro. First and foremost, I told somebody, man, it's like going to the prom with Dee Dee in high school. You know, you just got the, uh, you know how you've been, do- like you've been doing something for a while, but it just, I guess to me, man, it just feels good that it's, this isn't old. And I was sitting down thinking about the other day, like when you do the, you know, Muhammad Ali and then you, you know, Mike Tyson and I was just thinking, like, yo, first and foremost, like, what level do you have to be on, you know, for people to compare you? And then how long do you have to do it? And I was like, yo, one of these days, they're going to be doing that, you know, with, with the contributions we've made. And I was really thinking about it. I was like, yo, what level do you have to operate at where they compare him? Is Mike Tyson the best? Is Muhammad Ali? Is Jordan? Is LeBron? I'm like, yo, mm-hmm. do you understand, like, like, I'm like, yo, that's crazy how long that, you know, they did it. And, the, and, and for me, because I've been doing it for so long, you know how easy it is to fall out of love with something? You know what I'm saying? Like, you see people get married. And the thing to me that's almost fun, always hilarious about marriages is, like, when they're in the honeymoon stage, it's like, bruh, I'm talking about his no, ain't going to be together forever. <laughs> and then they get a divorce, you see folks throwing stuff out the window, folks cussing each other out. And it just seems that it's hard for something, even love, to last for a long time. And I think when I walked down that center aisle, I just was like, yo, I'm still in love with this. Like, I still enjoy speaking. Like, there's no part Mm -hmm. of it that I'm like, man, I can't stand that, you know? So it was just funny to get the jitters again for something I've been doing over 20 years. Mm -hmm. And and, in terms of the actual speech itself was there anything you were trying to hit them with message wise or anything that you know you would deliver that you wouldn't normally deliver in a, in a regular keynote you know I think see it's like it's it's a style you know it's like it's a it's a it's it's you know how you have like where you know in writing you have what is a persuasive you know uh, writing and of course when you did the PhD it's not, it's not you know it's not on that this is like straight you know qualitative quantitative and so I felt like it's the same, but it's different than that, how you deliver it, because you only get 15 minutes, which is which everybody knows from me. If you know anything about me, there's a few things you can do that's like kryptonite. You know what I'm saying? A script is probably <laughs> the number one thing you can do to kryptonite me. And then the second one, if I'm not careful, is, um, is time. It was so funny, see. You, you know, that's something I don't even know if you know, but there's something you always tell me to do. Like when I'm getting ready to speak and I'm and like, it might be the first time or I might be nervous or I just, it might be weird. I don't even know if you remember, but what's that one thing you always tell me to do so that I can make sure it's like, it's, it's, it's still one of my best speeches ever. Uh, no, no. Ah, uh, you always say, E, give him a joke. Uh, you know oh, oh yeah, yeah, definitely use Give him a joke. Yeah. yeah, you always say use humor because because when I don't, I'm just like in gear eight. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> right, I'm right. just in gear eight, just like, ooh, ooh. And this time, I try to do that. Like, I was like, okay, E, start slow, throw a little quick joke. So I told, you know, a joke about how, you know, I, the reason why I always wanted to do commencement is because, shoot, I went to 12 in a row, and I knew what wasn't sweet. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> I couldn't wait to the day. You know what I'm saying? You did like, your I'm, research. I'm hey, I, approve, wow. I approve of that yeah. joke. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. But what happened though, see, I told the joke. And shout out to TSU, man, President Glover. Bruh, like, man, it was like my big auntie, man. She, I don't know if she knew it was my first time. I don't know, but she grabbed me by my hand, 
she walked me through the crowd, walked me in the back with the Hall of Fame, you know, walked me down the aisle. Like, for real, she held my hand the whole time as we were walking. It was just phenomenal, man. That, um, you know, she was just talking about, she took me to see all the students, the football players. I took a picture with them before they marched. I, I walked through March with everybody, congratulated them before they even mm -hmm. came in. Man, she was just, she was top notch. And then, of course, football coach, you know, everybody, man. They just, TSU in terms of the staff, I got a police escort. They found the hotel I was in. I ain't even stayed where they told me I was supposed to stay. I stayed somewhere else. They found a police escort, got me there, took me. I'm talking about top of the class. They were just, man, they were phenomenal. But you know how it is, see? And, 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 and again, I said it and somebody was like, oh, E, man, we feel, we sorry. We don't mean no harm. I was like, bro, y'all ain't do nothing. But when I went to graduation, see, you know, we up at the top talking, bro. It ain't uh, no church. Doubt. It ain't a funeral. You ain't in the library. Right. And so sitting on the side where you watch versus being up there and people talking, it was weird because I'm used to talking. And then once I get up and I start, there's no talking. So I, I started with a joke and I didn't get their attention. So I went straight gorilla. I, you know what I'm saying? I started <laughs> off flamingo. All right, see, a little advice didn't work. I'm going to be smart. I, I, I tried, see? I tried to tell a little jokey joke. <laughs> and uh, they were still talking. And so I was like, all right, it's time to go to beast mode. So uh, yeah, I went beast mode and just blacked out. And it was funny, I had a story to end with, and all I could hear my wife say is, why don't you go hardcore? Like, what, what were you doing? So I was like, yo, E, go with what they know. The guru story, like, don't play with it. Don't give them something new if you hadn't tested it before. This is for all my speakers. Don't try nothing new on the crowd that ain't listening. You know what I'm saying? Don't try nothing new. You go with your, go with your classic boy. And uh, yeah, I went with the classic, man. It was, uh, I felt good when I finished. I was sweating up a storm, and um, I knew that regardless of how the parents received it, I could tell that the students received it, loved it. Uh, President Glover, the staff, you know, everybody loved it, man. So shout out, man, to my, uh, TSU is my first, baby. TSU! <laughs> I actually Tennessee did a, uh, believe it or not, a, a commencement, a fifth grade graduation. Hey, hey there it is. Hey, and, uh, hey. I too went beast mode. <laughs> So, just in case anybody oh, out, no, I'm dead serious. Remember when Keisha was teaching in Flint? Oh yeah, uh, yeah, 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 that's right. yeah. Yeah, yes. I did. I did the. Uh, I did the commencement. You want to talk yeah. about not paying attention? It was bullets <laughs> being flicked. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> Kids were asleep. You know, oh, they was right. looking like, please get off the stage. Oh, I was yeah. like, hey, but the parents and, deserve to see. And I mean, may you know they, they forever wanted. remember. Yeah, the Titans, <laughs> the raccoons, yeah. whatever. You know what whatever. Whatever they were. You know what I'm yeah. saying? No, no. And, hey, and they deserve it, man. Parents have waited what four years and so. Let me tell you something. I don't know what it is about graduations. But it could possibly be the most boring eight and a half hours of your life. If you right. go to a graduation like Michigan State, oh, my bro. goodness, Oof. it is long and exhausting. I started telling people, look, I will give you a better gift if I don't have to come. Yeah, if I don't have to come. <laughs> yeah, like if you forgive my absence, I will increase your gift by another $50. So usually uh, right. they'll take that. But anyway... Um, good, man. Well, I'm glad to hear you first commence me. I'm sure it won't be the last. So if you're out there and you're a college student and you're listen, listening to this and uh, you, you want to have the hip-hop preacher speak at your graduation, hit us up. Um, now, I have, and we need, we need to take a pause. Verify? Yeah, maybe oh, one of... Oh, I got of, something to y'all later. I got a uh -uh. confession. Oh, yeah. Oh, no, no, no. We got to get to your got airport. Confession. We got to get to the airport. No, 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 no. I got a confession, though. I ain't tell Okay, no, do the airport first. Let's go with the airport. Because yeah, you've been I got, wanting to get that off your chest. Let's do the airport. We'll save fair file for a little after that. All right. So, so Carl, I'm just like... <laughs> oh, hey, hey, let me get it. So let me get for, it. For the, so, for those of you, <laughs> I got to paint the, the, the clear picture so they know. So, congratulations, um, Lou Ross, Tum Tum. Um, there, Lou Ross um, graduated from Michigan State. So, you know, I've, I've been I've been rocking with you know Tum Tum since he arrived at Michigan State. You know, so my thing was I wanted to go to his graduation. Unfortunately, it was the 7:30 p.m. Friday night boy that, like C said, could last to 10, and um, I had to be in Nashville for Tennessee State um, graduation at eight in the morning. And so we just decided, you know what? Jamal, myself, Will went to the graduation, rented a, a truck, and we just drove the night. 
you know. So I probably ate that morning about, or that afternoon about six, and I didn't eat again. So we get, you know, to Nashville, Kendall's there waiting for us. And, uh, you know, we chopping it up for a while, you know, get to the spot. Everybody, you should get something to eat. bro. see, why is it that when you are doing the right thing, they got all the right, the wrong stuff, bro? Well, I, I promise y'all, when I first started speaking and I was eating everything, bro, nobody ever had Chick-fil-A on deck. They had <laughs> Chick-fil-A on deck. Oh, no doubt. And, bro, not only the Chick-fil-A, you know it's the South. They doing it big. Why did they have... The Krispy Kreme mm. red light, mm. oh, wow. red light donuts up off in that joint with the vitamin D, which I hadn't seen in quite some time to be honest with you. Ooh. The vitamin D milk, oh, orange yeah. juice was on I'm deck. Not, yeah. They had it all, bro. I was hurt, but anyway, so they were asking me to eat, and I was like, "Yo, I don't eat before I speak." You know, it's a long story, but I'm good. So they was like, "All right, cool." So imagine, bro, you you shake 800 people's hand mm -hmm. be before they come out. And then actually on the stage when they receive their diploma, it's hot in the building. We're supposed to do it outside. It rained, of course. Right. And so uh, Kendall and I get to the airport. I'm trying to fly back because we got Tum Tum's open house. Get to the airport. Man, I was like, yo, Tum. I was like, uh, yo, Kendall, like, uh, yo, bro, I need to grab something to eat. He was like, eat, we're in the airport. What you going to eat? I was like, bro, I'm about to get an egg sandwich. And he was like, oh, okay, it's 11 o'clock. I was like, it's all good. This, I'm sure this place, it's a diner. They got one. So I go up. Right. Uh, it's, a to, it's called uh, Eggs Over My Hammy. Right. You, you know what I'm <laughs> they saying? better have eggs. I'm talking about, bro, they got to have them. So I go to the register. Nobody's at the register. It's 11 o'clock, Carl. I mean, I'm feeling like, personally, I could be wrong, but 11 o'clock, if you're a diner, that's prime time, right? So nobody's there. So then I go, you know, um, I leave the, you know, the cash register and go, you know, where they're seating. And I asked the lady, like, yo, is it too late to get an egg sandwich? She's like, no, you good. But I can't serve you if you're taking it to go. I was like, yeah, my flight departs in about 15, 20 minutes, so I need to go ahead and grab this and get out. Mm -hmm. She's like, it's okay, go up to the front. So I went back up to the front. I promise y'all, I'm, I'm talking about, it was like a Will Smith movie. What nobody, it just Will Smith, what nobody, nobody was in that joint. I'm like, I feel like I'm in the Will Smith movie. Like, no humans in this joint. So finally, we see a head moving in the back, and uh, we like, yo, by the, by the, you know, the Wait, uh, what time there. was it again? I just want to make sure. It was 11 o'clock, bro. 11 o'clock, bro. A.M., bro. Oh, A.M., so okay, got you. Okay. So, so nobody, yeah, A.M., nobody's moving. I'm like, okay, something's wrong. So I'm like, Kendall, what's, what, you, what you think? So you know Kendall, a gorilla. Kendall was like, hey, you know, like, hey, oh, no anybody doubt. back there? And so little man came out looking funny, like, y'all good? I'm like, yeah, bro, I'm trying to get this egg sounds real quick to go. He, <laughs> uh, he was like, oh, oh, no. We, he was like, oh, no, no, we on break. Oh, wow. I said, what? He said, oh, no, we on break, bro. I said, on break from what? He's like, no, we just on break right now, bro. Come back. I was like, the come whole, back. Hold on. At, it, at 11 in the morning. He was on break, bro. I was like, no way possible. You on but break. But he was on break, but where was the person who wasn't on break? Ah, they was on break. <laughs> I don't know. Uh, bro, I, bro I, I couldn't believe it. I was like, you're not serious, right? So I go and tell the lady, like, yo, my man said he was on break. And she's like, okay, well, go back over there real quick, and I'm going to find out what's going on. Let me serve this person. I was like, all right, cool. So I stand back up there, ask Kendall. I was up there for about 10 minutes, and it was a line full of people with one dude had, like, two Cokes for him and his girl, two waters for him and his girl, in like a, a, a breakfast bar, and nobody came out. And I told him, I was like, my man said he was on break. I promise you, these people put their stuff down, left, wow. and went to the, what is it like, Carl, like a Hudson's News, I think it's called. Oh, yeah, uh, yeah, Hudson yeah, News. Yeah. Bro, they went to Hudson News, and I told Kendall, I was like, yo, Kendall, they losing customers. Kendall was like, they don't, he don't care? No. I was like, no, no, no. I was like, Kendall, you got to hear what I'm telling you. He must care. Kendall was like, yo, E, he has a hourly mindset. As far as he's concerned, wow. he don't care. He don't care if they sell or they don't sell. He getting the same check. But I was like, yo, Kendall, you're not hearing me. If you don't make any money, you don't have a job. Like, he's not getting it. You go out of business. He was like, no, you're not getting it. <laughs> he does not care. And if this sucker shut down, <laughs> another little one. diner yeah. going to open up. In the and same he'll spot. go to the next one. Yeah. And I was just so frustrated because I was uh... like, First of all, you on break at 11. I'm trying to ask, what time do you open? Like, so what time uh, do you 10 open? 
I was kind of like, <laughs> what time I'm do you hoping open? it's a 24-hour joint. No, That's what I'm talking about. Yeah. Man, I was so hurt. Right? <laughs> break it, he left. Wow. I'm hurt because as a pastor, as a teacher, as a whatever, like every single time, Carl, something, somebody is sick, they uh, go fund me, um, um, cash app, you mm. know. Um, it's like nobody don't have no money. But nobody want to work, though, Carl. That's what it be killing me. It's like mm. nobody has money when it's an emergency or when they need something. Like nobody has money, but, but there are jobs and nobody wants to work. But everybody want to get paid. And I know we already talked about this, so I'm not going to go there. But it's so frustrating that we have opportunities now, opportunities of a lifetime. And I can honestly say, I can honestly say when I was... Um, uh, you know, working at the Olive Garden, like for real, bro, I was putting it in. Even when I worked at McDonald's, I, I, I was putting it in. Like, I, maybe I was homeless, okay, I don't know. But I was working. And so I just, man, this generation, man. It's, and then I went to Okamis Auto Collection this morning to drop the uh, Didi's Mercedes off to get the oil change. Carl, I, I get there at 7.30. 7.30. I'm on the wrong side because they got cars in front of where you're supposed to come in. I asked my man, like, is this where I come in? He's like, no, you come in over there. I was like, but bro, y'all got like six cars that y'all had lined up on Friday when y'all left. So I'm hmm. thinking that I got to come this way. He's like, go that way. So I go that way. Of course, now two people are in front of me. I get in, Carl. Do you realize nobody says nothing to me for, the, for, hmm. for 10 minutes? Like, they don't say nothing to me for 10 minutes. Man, I'm so angry. I call Chuck, like, Chuck, you use the same spot. What would you do? He's like, it's only one guy there that's going to look out for you. And I'm not going to go down this path. We're going to leave it alone. But I will say this, a lady came in after me, they saw her. Another dude came in after him, they saw him. And I'm just standing there. And I know mm. I had on my baseball cap and I had on my jogging suit. I didn't, I, you know, I didn't look like I was, you know, had no money. But man, I was so frustrated, Carl. I, and I just, I blurted out at 10 minutes after, I blurted out. Like, yo, I'm not gonna be funny, but this is disrespectful now. And the young lady came up, was like, okay, I'm gonna get you some help. Took another uh. five minutes. And then when I came back to pick up my vehicle, the receptions came up to me. I'm talking about beat, beat red. And was like, Mr. Thomas, I want to apologize for what happened to you earlier. Um, my, my belief is, you know, it was the weekend. You know, people came in scurrying around. It was, it was overwhelming. It was multiple cars. And they overlooked you. There was no excuse. But I was just like, whatever. I told my wife, like, I'm going to see if I can find another dealer you know, that can take care of me. But I, I just, like I said, now, we'll be I can almost about understand this. this at Butch's Diner. But at the Benz dealer, the, the they Benz tripping? John, oh, right. no, I'm like, this is crazy, Come on, bro. No, that's a different yeah. level right there. No, yeah. that's... Uh, no, I said that was it for me. I'm going to try to find... Wow. I don't care if I got to drive 30 uh, miles. And if anybody knows Okamis Auto Collection, you know what I'm saying? Let them know we, they're on the podcast. They the made the podcast the for the, the Gazelle, Gazelle of the Week. week. <laughs> Gazelle of the Week. Gazelle of the Week. And, and then, see, my, they charged me my oil change for Didi's car was $195. I'm like, I'm paying you $195. I'm paying you $195 for oil change. And for five quarts of oil that costs about five dollars no, each. I'm saying I'm 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 okay with the um I'm okay with the with yeah, the okay with the price as long as you the, get the service. Yeah, but as long right, as I get the service. Right. Bro, it's, that's how I feel every time I go to Publix and I got to wait in line. I'm like, y'all know I could have went to Walmart for this. <laughs> Publix, y'all, I'm paying $5 extra for some eggs, yeah, $1.99 yeah. extra for a gallon of yeah. milk. I'm like, saying, I'm going to go yeah. ahead and need to be uh, rocking yeah. right away. Yeah, you know what yeah, I'm saying? Yeah, yeah. That's so mess you up. See, I'm yep. upset. But yeah, yeah we, I, I'd rather talk about... MJ and no, I'm just saying, <laughs> Steve, right, right. before I talk about this. Yeah, you know what no. I'm but you know the crazy thing is, again, and we've talked about it a million times. Is uh, you know certain companies are able to create that culture of customer yeah. service. Yeah. I told you yeah. I was at a at the mall and we got Chick Fil A, and I was sitting in the mall food court, and the lady from Chick Fil A came up, was like, "Can I get you a refill?" I was like, "What?" I felt like I had a, a a server at my table. I was like, wow, somebody had some uh, some little Asian cuisine over there. They was looking boo-boo face when they saw me getting my refill. I was like, yep, y'all should have got the Chick-fil-A, but it's just a whole yeah. different experience. And oh, you know, can, we, some... can, can we shout out Chick-fil-A though when you finish? Shout them out, see. Shout them out for what? Oh man, I don't know if you heard, Carl, but man, we got our gala coming up in September oh, yeah, yeah, for yeah. the school oh, yeah. days. Yeah. So. 
I was about to say, if they're not sponsoring, <laughs> right. shut, it down. Down. See? <laughs> shut it down. It, hey, but it just shows you, though, like, for real, we, we, we have been, you know, going to Chick-fil-A on the reg, you know what I'm saying, like, over the years and showing them love. And finally, you know, that karma, finally, you know, for our first major uh, fundraising event, Chick-fil-A not only sponsored uh, the venue in downtown uh, Atlanta, but they also provided the food for the venue. So, man, I just, for those of you who, like, been working five, six, seven years and grinding, and you, like, ain't nobody showing me no love, nobody support me, you know, just keep going, man. Like, don't quit, don't give up. We've been doing this thing together, you know, since, what, 2000, professionally, what, guys, yeah. 2007, 2008, yeah, you know, that. and, yeah, look how long it took us to get a sponsor, but we got one of the best, and you know how it is. Once you get somebody like Chick-fil-A to say they love you, you know what I'm saying? I think I think everybody might start showing us some love. Mm, well, we'll see. But I know yeah. somebody who is showing love, and that's Hello Fresh. All right, Hello, Hello. Fresh has been showing showing us a lot of love. And uh, so, man, this segment is brought to you by Hello Fresh. With Hello Fresh, each box is made up of fresh, responsibly obtained ingredients selected from the highest rated trusted farms. With the Global Eats option. It helps bring authentic international dishes and flavors to home cooks for exciting new meals. The convenient part is that all the ingredients come pre-measured and labeled meal kits. Cooking will become something you actually look forward to when you uh, come home from work. All right. So check this out. What did I eat the other day? I had it right here because I wanted to make sure I had it up for y'all. And I know E don't don't kill me, but it was fire. But the uh, Candace and I had made the balsamic glaze strip steak with the mm. cream spinach and roasted potatoes, and also we also uh, killed the uh, chicken orzo dinner with cheesy Ooh. roasted zucchini and tomato. Ooh. And you know the crazy thing about it, and wow. Carl will tell you because I don't know e, if you ever had the chance to really make one on your own yet. But Carl will tell you not only does well, it taste has. fire, <laughs> not only does it taste fire. It actually makes you look like a five-star chef. Look, I'm talking you about You know what I'm saying? You do it, and then you feeling like you really know how to cook. Like, it, uh -huh. it's a beautiful presentation. The colors pop, and, um, man, you can really look like a boss, man. And, again, they literally deliver every single ingredient. If you got to do salt and pepper, you know, sometimes you just keep shake, shake, shaking. No, they give you the exact Pre amount of salt. Yeah. The exact amount of pepper, just literally throw the whole thing in there. And I, I swear to you, my friends and everybody who's been using it been hitting me up like, yo, I heard you talking no, about it on the, the podcast, deal. but that thing is the real deal. So, uh -huh. um, yeah, listen, man, uh, with subscribing to HelloFresh, there are many benefits so you can keep enjoying it week after week. Get delicious meals delivered right to your doorstep, all right, for less than $10 a serving and free shipping. Manage your account easily by choosing your delivery date to match your schedule and pause it while you're on vacation. So sign up today, all right, for $30 off your first week of HelloFresh. Visit HelloFresh.com and enter SUCCESS30, all right? That's HelloFresh.com and enter the promo code SUCCESS30 if you want to be down with us and, and get fresh and uh, get fit and all the things we're trying to do. I know we're bringing you all a lot of health and fitness and food, and um, we really want to pour into you guys so that you guys can have that uh, optimal health, all right? Now, I have... One of the most controversial, I say hey. controversial, and the reason I say controversial is because usually when I do a fair foul, I already had an answer. Like, I just realized that doing the fair foul, I've already made it up in my mind nine times out of ten that it's foul, and I'm just bringing it to y'all for confirmation, right? This fair foul, I was actually torn in my own head, <laughs> but I did it anyway, all right? So I'm going to explain this, and I want you guys to really think, and don't try to be funny, like really think, is this fair file, all right? And shout out to Jalen. Jalen's here. He's working on his computer next to me. He already knows this story because he saw me minutes after the <laughs> offense or non-offense occurred, okay? <laughs> so May 2nd was my wife's birthday, all right? I believe it was a Tuesday or something like that, right? We had already talked about, what do you want for, yeah, of course, y'all know I did it big. We did Beyonce. We did helicopters. We did all kind of stuff. But this year, he said it. I hadn't been saying anything about it, but we are buying a new house, right, over in the projects. He, he trying to front. I don't have an insider. <laughs> we do not have running water, nor electricity. Okay? That uh, is a very on. humble, modest, meek establishment. Farms um, in the backyard, y'all. They're going to be farming, too. 
You feel me? <laughs> Where I have my Hello Fresh or ingredients ready to go. <laughs> um, but so she said, "Look, baby, I know you want to give me something. And usually, I say I don't want anything, and I do. But we're getting a house. You know, it's a lot of expenses that go into getting a house. And yeah. you know, she already talking about she want the kitchen redone. I'm like, boy, we ain't even bought the how, how you want the kitchen. <laughs> anyway, long story. That's not the point. So." I'm like, all right, cool. Well, how about we go out to dinner with the fam, right? We'll all go out to dinner, Cam and Train, Nene, my kids, my fam. We'll go out to dinner tonight. It'll be great. So she was like, that's perfect. Let's go out to a nice dinner. Shout out to South City Kitchen. E, I forgot to tell you, it's a waiter there who loves you, and you're supposed to come back. He recognized me and said, hey, are you CJ? And I thought he was going to ask for an autograph. He said, where's E.T.? So I was like, oh, okay, hold up. Um, so she says, all right, cool. So, this is Tuesday, and then I have the lunch meeting. Well, shout out to my guy, Justin. Young, hungry, great entrepreneur who I've been mentoring for some time now. And so we catch up every once in a while, and, you know, we uh, eat, and he asks me some questions, and, you know, I try to help him out as much as I can, and we go from there. Now, Justin shows up, and he's got this really nice blue bag. And we're sitting at lunch, and he's like, here, this is for you. And I was like, oh, what is this? And so it was, um, he hands it to me, I open it up, and it's like this big, probably like a six by six glass like piece, but it was thick and heavy and engraved on the inside of it. And I don't know if you guys have ever seen this, but it's like a 3D picture of my family. Like, and it was like a great photo and it was of my family and it was this 3D image, and it was heavy. I'm talking about this thing weighed like 20 pounds. I'm talking about it was nice. And then it came with like a stand that like lights up, and the light shoots up into it, and it just looks gorgeous. Like it's like, you know, chiseled perfectly. It was a beautiful piece. So he's like, yo, here, I want you to have this. I invested in this company, you know, and just wanted to show you a token of my appreciation for looking out for me, blase split. So, as y'all probably now can figure out where this is going. <laughs> no doubt. <laughs> it was beautifully wrapped everything. Eve. So I'm like, all right, cool, we finished lunch, whatever. I come back home, and I'm driving, and I'm like, no, nah, don't do it, see. Don't do it. Don't do it. This is do it this. for the vibe. Don't do it. Do it for the vibe. <laughs> don't, don't do it. And so I ain't going to do it, all right? So I'm like, shoot, I'm driving home, and I'm like, man, this is really nice. And I'm like, you know, I didn't get her anything. At this point, I didn't even have a card or anything. I'm like, yo, I got to. So we got home, and... uh I, or I got home and she was sitting on the couch and I went up to her and I was like, hey, babe, you know, you're incredible. Happy birthday. <laughs> and, I, and I just handed it to her. And I kissed her and I walked in the kitchen and while she was opening it, and she opens it up and she was like, oh, this is, babe, I thought I said don't get me anything. And I was like, you know, I couldn't just, you know. Yeah. Yeah, I just and could. I just let it ride, bro. And she was happy, mm. and I let it ride. Now I feel comfortable about this because she didn't listen to the podcast, <laughs> right? So it, uh, this but, gonna be but, the one she listened to. But, well, hey, <laughs> I, I'm willing to chalk up my happy marriage for better ratings on the podcast. Apparently, uh, no doubt. Uh, I want you guys to rock with us, so I have to tell you all my business. But oh, this is a business. true, true Oof. story. And I was up. torn. And I did it. So I'm going it's fair, of course, because I actually did it. And I asked Jalen, like, so then me and Jalen went to go get the kids or something, like a couple minutes later, and we got in the truck. And he was like, oh, man, that was a nice gift you got for auntie. And I was like, yeah, you know what? I was <laughs> like, I got I to gotta get something off my chest. Nephew. I was like, uh, <laughs> These are you know my that confessions. Gift? <laughs> you know how you start? And you like, so you know that gift, right? <laughs> like, yeah. And so I was like, um... And so I asked him, and he was like, uh, Uncle C, that's you good. I'm telling you, God know you busy. So that was a blessing <laughs> he just gave to you. So you didn't even have to. So oh, I was man. like, man, I felt very dirty afterwards is the only word I can really use to describe it. I felt I felt shamed a little bit, but I also yeah. felt great because she was so geeked up. She so, loved you. With all that being said, <laughs> fair or foul? When wrong, when wrong turns right. <laughs> when wrong turns right, bro. You feel me? No, and seriously. That don't happen a lot. Is it fair that or foul? That don't happen a lot. 
I'm it's just fair all day, bro. Yeah, it's it's fair, fair, bro. Okay, give us the reason why. Because I have a feeling this is going to be one of the most debated fair files ever. And we'll make a post. If y'all listen to this, we're going to make a post on our IG page. Oh, S2S sure, S2 yeah. Podcast. And we'll put saying, up the fair I'm file. And I want to vote fair, for bro. real. But. I'm just saying it's fair because at the... The, the 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 ends justify the means. means. No doubt. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? I'm just being real. You ain't do nothing wrong. You ain't. You know what I'm saying? No. You ain't do nothing wrong. You know what I'm saying? And it just. I feel. And like, I never I like really Jayla. told her, hey, I went out and bought this, and now, I was out at I'm the saying. mall all day you looking for the perfect. That. I didn't say that. And not only did you not say that, she said, "Don't get me nothing." Right. It, it, it's don't. It's all good. So I just felt like. All the good that you do to the world mm. is coming back. Mm. To coming back. Yep. You know what I'm saying? It's, it's a blessing. To I love all it. the good to the, in the world. You can't, you can't possibly do everything that's supposed to be good for you yourself. You know what I'm saying? Like somebody <laughs> gotta do right by you if you're doing right by all these people. So you just got the hookup, bro. That's all. Hey, I'm, I'm gonna say it like this. I'm gonna go back to the one with Adam and Carly. It's fair until she finds out. Yeah. Mm. I'm gonna so put you it think she'll be mad if she found I mean what? What is the? What, what, I wouldn't say mad. I wouldn't say mad. It'll she just, just gonna take go the experience a yeah, little she bit. She's just gonna go bad. Bad. That's all. That's all she gonna oh, do. That's, well, I can <laughs> deal with that. <laughs> yeah, that's all she gonna say. Bad. If that's it. I can't believe. No, you I'm trying to think. Yeah, I'm like, it. okay. The other thing is, should I have told her, hey, I got this 20 minutes ago at lunch from somebody you have never even met, and he gave it to me, <laughs> and now I'm giving it to you 20 minutes later. <laughs> Should I have explained that <laughs> no, to her? That, no, that's not necessary. That's not necessary, bro. I mean, it's, that's not necessary. It's a gift. It was a gift, bro. <laughs> a ve- hey, a very, a, 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 no, 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 let me add some words. A very a well gift. thought out gift, though. Yeah, you know what I'm gift. saying? Oh, that was was very beautiful. well thought out. That was really for her, though. Absolutely. Because you wouldn't have done nothing with it anyway. Oh. Like, you wouldn't have been feeling that gift, bro. Oh, you no. wouldn't have been like. No, no, no. It's yeah. definitely got a, you know, a mother feel. Like, she put yeah. it on her desk at work. Yeah. It lights up. It's, it's a beautiful, like, a gift. I was just like, man, I felt so. I felt so dirty. Nah, That's bro, the only word I hey, used. Don't discredit the, the, the way I gave it to her was so bossy. Like I had been out <laughs> all week looking for this. And gift. I think that's why you felt guilty. Uh, like, so let's take that part out. Okay. You shouldn't have probably done well, that. Okay. You should have just given it to her. Well, like, I had to. Yeah. You know, you got to turn on the swag to make it a full, complete process. Yeah. You can't just mm. hand it to her and run. I gave it yeah. to her like, hey, I know you said. You know, but yeah, you, you should know have been me. put it on a bed and let her find just let her it. find it. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Find no explanation. It. Yeah, you went too deep with the whole. Yeah, you there did kind of take a little bit of a there blessing. There it is. Out. Yeah, there yeah. it is. You yeah. know what I'm saying? I like that. Hey, I figured yeah. it's like this. Don't just dip your toe in the water. If you come, yeah. don't no. jump in. I'm I just went saying. all in, bro. I went no, all in. Was, it was fair at first. But then when I found out you ain't had no pure heart, that might be what. I was like, you really did not have a pure yeah. heart. Yeah, he just saw, oh, I, the way no. he saw that first, it sounded like it was a pure, give me a pure heart. It sounded pure. But when you told me the swag uh, part, how you pushed oh, it like you I bought swagged it, it all the I way was out. like, oh yeah, no, that's oh, not right. man, I yeah, came yeah, in, yeah. you know, like it yeah. had like a little loop yeah. on the top yeah. of it, like your, your yeah. bag you hold. I had it with one finger. Yeah. And I was like, yeah, no. Nah. <laughs> Ladies Here and you gentlemen, go. <laughs> Ladies Ladies and gentlemen, I, who's the best the husband in the world? Yeah, after no, no, no. further review, after, after going in the booth and looking at that sucker in slow mo, uh, it's, it, it's a flagrant two. It was fair. It's it a was fair in real two. time. So just when I heard that, I'm like, no, nah, that ain't that ain't right, bro. She getting ejected. Right, yeah. Oh man. <laughs> Woo. All right. Well, there you have it, ladies and gentlemen. I, I thought I had one. Uh, yeah, you did. You did. Uh, you pulling that sucker back. They thought it was a three. They dropped the confetti. Uh, they thought oh, it was a three. Boy, they dropped, yeah. they wow. dropped the confetti. They thought it was a yeah, three. I we did. had further review. It's, a, it's five. It's further wow. review. It's so, a so I was good until I sold it as if. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Wow. Mm. yeah. Okay. You'd have just yeah. given it to her. It'd have been sweet, but you did it. You took ownership of that joke. Oh, like, I did. One. That's the only shit. I swagged it yeah. all the way out. You took my man. Yeah. You took all my man shine from me. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Unbelievable. Uh, oh, wow. All right. Well, hey, shout out to Justin anyway for that gift. And uh, I appreciate it, bro. And uh, hopefully my wife don't chuck it out the window once you figure out what really happened. <laughs> um, all right. Hey, go to S2S Podcast. Yeah. S2S Podcast on Instagram and vote. 
and I want to see if y'all thought that was fair or foul. I have a a a, a, a hunch that there's going to be a gender bias. Oh, this is going definitely. E, I'm oh, feeling. No oh, yeah, it's definitely you know gender. Saying? No question. Now, look, 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 y'all. Why y'all on there? Look, and I, y'all know I don't never do this. I'm ready to get serious right now. I'm ready to go. But I got it. <laughs> Mine's is not a fair or foul. It's foul. But I got to do a confession. Uh-oh. I got... I, look, y'all, everybody y'all confessed it today. What's going on? Hey, I, hey, I've been on the road for a grip. Got back to the crib. And my family, Didi especially, is the candy man. Like, she got all the treats. All the kids in the block want to come over here and act like, you know, they want to hang out with her, but they want the treats. And when Mason see me, it's like, you know, we got the little Peter Parker boy and we be running around acting like superheroes. So I haven't been home for a grip. I finally get home. The weather was nice. They saw me. Jordan came up to me first. And I, I, bro, I was a little tired. I ain't gonna lie. I got back late. I was hanging out with Didi. I was tired. So Jordan saw me first. He rode his bike up and was like, what's up, Uncle? I was like, what up? And he was like, like they was looking like, you want to play? And I was like, I'm, I didn't want to say I was tired, but I had to just think of, I was like, oh, I know what I could do. We had just went grocery shopping. So I was like, we had a whole bunch of bags, y'all. I was like, yeah, we about to turn this into a game. We about to turn the groceries into a, to a full-blown game. So I'm like, okay, let's play. Let's see who can drop these jokers in here the quickest. You know what I'm saying? And uh, so, so Mason was trying to keep up with, he was trying to keep up with Jordan. And I got the two cars in the garage. So he, they sprint, Jordan sprinting through like, bah, you know, grabbing it. And I, bruh, I'm just tripping that the testosterone is even strong at like at five, 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 no five three, uh, and four. No doubt. It's unbelievable, bruh. The competition was heated. And so Jordan grabbed the six pack of water and bah, shot in there. And Mason grabbed it. I was like, yo, Mace, you good, bruh. Grab this, uh, the tissue. <laughs> and Mason looking at me like, the tissue? <laughs> Ain't no pub and tissue, bro. I'm not about to get right. no, you know, I'm, I'm a superhero, E. I was like, I know Mason, but the water is heavy, bro. You still kind of, you know what I'm saying, growing. He ain't care. He, I'm talking about, he Hulk Hogan that joint. Grabbed it, ran, and he got almost to the door, almost to the steps. And, I, and that sucker hit the ground. <laughs> and I was like, yo, Mace, you good? Uh, he turned around and looked at me. I was like, bro, you good. Like, you ain't got to prove nothing to me. You good. And he grabbed that joker, tried to lift it. And his sister came to the rescue. His sister came, Aubrey came, grabbed mm. it from him, took it in. And they going back and forth, back and forth, back and forth. And Didi, same thing. See, my heart. I, bro, I had to confess. But my girl was like, hey, you got all the groceries in? Like, you did that quick. <laughs> I, I, I had to tell her. See, I couldn't take the pub because you know oh, I ain't really into that. Rolled it yeah. out. I, I had to tell the truth. I was like, no, I had the kids. So he was like, you had the kids bring the groceries in? I was like, D, they wanted to play. I, I ain't oh, feel they like got playing. Energy so, for all of us. I yeah, promise. We, we played the hookup, bro. They put all them groceries in. So because I felt bad, bro, I just gave. I paid them. Was like, all right, here go y'all. Here go a couple of dollars, you know what I'm saying, for helping me out. So, so you manipulate kids into yeah. doing work <laughs> I, for you. Hey, I promise you, bro, I felt so bad, but they wanted to play. Like I, I gave said, a gift. With Mason. I <laughs> gave a <laughs> gift, bro. You did, you did. I gave a I gift. Uh, yeah. You know what I'm saying? I gave them money, though. I did give them money at the end. Uh, you I paid, paid for it. You paid for the service. Yeah, I paid for it. Yeah. Money at that age uh, is, is, is nothing. What are they going to do with that money? They can't buy I nothing. I don't know. They going to buy something with it. Jordan going to buy something with it. Mason seemed uh, geek when uh, I gave it to uh. him. Oh, and what's so funny about Mace, Mace put it in his pocket. What, what's Mace, about three? Is he three years he old? He is three going four, yeah. He should be super yeah, so four, he put, yeah. I said Mace is a beast. He put the money in his pocket. It wasn't nothing but about two, three dollars. He put the money in his pocket, and then he took his hand, and he started clapping where the money was in his pocket, like, ah. <laughs> <laughs> so I felt real good then. I was like, oh, yeah. He know the value of money. He, he hit in his pocket like that. Yeah, so y'all won't uh, do it again. Uh, Next time uh. I bring my own groceries in and then go play with them. But I was tired, bro. Man, let me tell you something, bro. I, the older you get, the lazier you get. Uh, I will gra- I, we will have 852 grocery bags in the back of the truck, and I will grab every single one of them jokers. One I got trip. them hanging off my One pinky. trip. I yeah. got four bags on I'm one pinky. I'm the exact pinky. same. Yeah. Bro, I'm trying so hard not to take a double trip. I'm going to yeah. got water balancing on my head. The Bro, only problem you. I have is when I get to the door. 
I'm like, somebody, please, Trey, <laughs> and for the love of God, please come open this door. And he'll never get it right. So I end up dropping something. But yeah, no, when you uh yeah, when you get over 35, that laziness kick in, you uh you definitely not trying to run waters back and forth. So all right, um, I think we've had enough fun. Let's get to something real before we uh get have to read negative feedback all <laughs> next week. Um let me see. Oh, Oh, so what would, that's what I wanted to talk about. Um, I had got a close friend of mine who was getting ready to make a very big time um, life changing decision, if you will, I guess, you know, and, and life changing, you know, relatively. Then everybody's in good health and things of that nature. But um, they were seeking the counsel of their parents, and the parents, have a different mindset, if you will. You know, they're more old school, classic, yeah, you know, do course. things mm. by the book, not necessarily to, you know, chase your dreams and, and be adventurous. They're more safety, security, things of that nature. And so uh, they called me and were, and were going through it. Now, they had already made the decision. They weren't calling me to say, hey, what do you think I should do? They were calling to say, I went away from the decision that my parents thought I should make, but they've been there and they've been such wise counsel for me for the last however many years that I feel guilty or I feel bad or I feel like, you know, weird about, you know, not taking their advice and not going with it. And it got me to to thinking, and I wanted to bring it to you guys on the podcast, is just like, when do you heed the advice of counsel? Because we always taught, like, yo, find somebody who can help you make the decision, seek mm-hmm. wise counsel, right? Yeah. We learned yeah. that in the Bible. Yeah. The Word tells yeah. us to seek wise yeah. counsel. You know, yeah. and we do that. But when that wise counsel, maybe when you get a gut feeling, I guess, when you when you know in your heart that this is the right decision and that counsel doesn't line up to that, I'm wondering how you resolve that in your mind? Do you go with the counsel anyway? Do you take your own, you know, gut feeling about it? Because I was like, man, I, I, I had a hard time really explaining to, you know, my friend exactly what, I mean, I was like, I'm, I'm proud of you for making your own decision. But at the same time, they're like, yo, my folks been there for me at the hardest of times yeah. of my life. They've yeah. been looking out, you know, they've always been there. And now here I am, you know, with this decision, and I basically mm. said, bump y'all, I'm going this way, and I feel bad. And the parents, of course, you know, didn't necessarily just show a bunch of oh, love. No question. Joy. So, I don't know. You guys get what I'm trying to say now. Go for it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No question. Yeah, yeah. I guess I'll, I'll, I'll kind of start because, you know, looking back, I realized that my parents weren't necessarily, like, control freaks. And even though I thought it was about the decision that I made, I realized really looking back, it was how I went about doing that, if that makes sense. And I feel like for me, see, because I already thought in my mind or knew in my mind that my parents weren't, like for instance, the entrepreneurship, let's just be real, to get married at 19. You feel what I'm saying? Let's go, you know what I'm saying? Let's, 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 let's uh, before we get to entrepreneurship, let's just call a spade a spade. You know, and I think what I did wrong, and it's just me, but I want to give counsel to those of you out there who have to make tough decisions like this. I find that when I thought my parents weren't going to approve of something, that I delayed the conversation and I probably waited, see, way too long to say something because I was afraid of the conflict, if that makes sense, Mm -hmm. you know? So because I already thought my parents was going to be tripping about the fact that I was getting married so early, I didn't want to say anything to them. And when I did say something, see, it was like, it was almost too late, if that makes sense. You know what I'm saying? I might have been, it might have been the week of, you know, I called, I probably didn't even call. Somebody said something and my mom found out. And so she called me like, you know, is it true you get married? So I think the first thing we want to do is stop avoiding conflict because it's uncomfortable. Stop avoiding, you know, your loved ones or your, your mentor or whatever. And as soon as you know you're going to do something that they disapprove of, you, you need to go in conversation immediately. You know what I'm saying? You need to just stop and just, if you know six months in advance, like go ahead and just, you know, just say, hey, look, I know this is going to be an uncomfortable conversation. I already know what you're going to say because you've been counseling me forever. 
So I know why you, you know, I know, I know what you're going to say. So let me just, just tell you the truth. So let's just get it. Let's just do it early. So we get that out the way. I think the other thing that, you, you know, that I did not do is I didn't even want to hear what my parents had to say because I wanted to do what I wanted to do anyway. Mm -hmm. And in hindsight, it's just like, yo, E, you still was going to get married. Why, why, why didn't you just sit down and, and hear their complaints, if that makes sense? Just let them voice how they feel. And I think that's what my parents were hurt about the most. It's like, we've done so much for you and we've been there for you. One, you didn't tell us. You kept it a secret, which is pissed them off. And then two, you didn't give us the luxury of sitting down and trying to reason. And I don't know that I feel like they would have reasoned anyway. I don't know. But I, I feel like it wasn't like my parents always wanted to change my mind about stuff, I think it was that they felt like they had given me, they all, they gave me everything. And in certain situations when I felt it was uncomfortable, I did just the opposite. I withheld stuff from them, you know what I'm saying, and, 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 and isolated myself, you know, et cetera. So I would just say to those of you who have conflict problems or you hate to hear no, just go ahead and sit down, man, get it out the way, talk it through, and then at least your parents know you respected them enough to be real and honest with them. Hmm. Yeah, and, 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 and Carl, I want you to go too, but I, I, I more so E want to, uh, no, go for it, Carl. Let, let, we'll hash it out in a minute. Hey, I'm going with Will Smith. Parents just don't understand. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, no, no, I'm saying if, if, and again, of course the situation, again, we, we speak in general, guys, so, you know, I don't know the exact situation. Well, I'm high one general. I got married in 19. <laughs> <laughs> well, and, and, and to be fair, Carl, yours probably wasn't general at one point. I'm pretty sure mom's wasn't thrilled with you uh, that, working with, with, with the hip-hop that's exactly preacher. That's exactly where I was going. See, I was just going to say, like, to the point of, like, in my gut, I knew this was something that I wanted to pursue. I'm talking about willing to fail at it, if you get what I'm saying. Like, it ain't going to kill me. It was something that I was willing to pursue, like, to, to failure if it meant that because, like, I believed in it. And that's what I'm saying. Parents just don't understand. I can't convince my mom, my dad of, you know, y'all pay, like Eve was saying, y'all pay for me to go to, you know, go to school, get a master's degree, to go to biology route, potentially a doctor or whatever, and now I'm just deciding I'm about to edit videos. First of all, I'm about to go to school again. You know what I'm saying? Like, I'm about to go to school to another master's degree. I'm sure in their mind, if y'all know my dad, my dad thinking it's his responsibility. I'm, I don't know, no matter how old I get, they're still thinking it's partly their responsibility. But I'm about to tell them I'm about to go to school again to do something else. So the conversation right. can never go correct. You know what I'm right, saying? It can right, never right, go right. right. There's no, I can't convince you of anything out of that. I'm about to take a chance and I want y'all to be happy for me. Like, it ain't, it ain't about to be real. I have nothing else to offer you than I'm about to take a chance. I believe in the chance. I think it's the win. But I have nothing else to show you. Like, and again, you got a lot of wisdom. You got a lot of history. You got all this on me. But I'm just saying, yo, in my gut, I'm about to do this because I believe in it. And I feel like this is the thing that I have to do for my life. You know what I'm saying? So I don't think that they can, under I don't think it's fair to expect them to understand that because they have a whole different perspective. Now, at some point, I'm hoping that they come around and support, whether they agree or disagree, you know, support in some capacity, not, not like we're going to be right, beefing. Right, right, in some capacity. You know what I'm saying? Right. In some capacity support, whatever that looks like, I'm not sure. But I don't think it's fair for me to expect them to just agree to what I'm doing. You know what I'm saying? Just off the bat of it. I, I just got to believe. Did, hmm? But even though you knew in your gut that they were going to have a problem with it, whoever they is, they is usually my mama, to be honest with you. They right. is usually not. You know what I'm saying? Both my parents and my father, my mom the one that's usually very opinionated and wants to tell me how she feels. You know what I'm saying? But honestly, when you, when, in your gut, when you knew that, that you know, they may not agree, mm. like how did you approach it? Were you like a little bit, you know, standoffish or did you just call it like right off the cuff, you know, and had a conversation? Oh, it took a minute. <laughs> it definitely took a minute. Yeah. I'm not confrontational either. So you know what I'm saying? So I'm trying to ease it in, like, you know, the questions. And again, we're living apart. <laughs> I'm living in Michigan, so they ain't here. Uh, my dad was in New York. My mom was in Barbados, transitioning to New York. So, you know, the question is, what you doing? I'm like, oh, I'm thinking about going back to school. Oh, okay, cool. You know, of course they like that. So I started with the let's let it down easy, and I'm just kind of playing around. You know, I'm working here, doing a little bit. Hey, I got this opportunity to do some video work, and it seemed pretty cool. And I'm just kind of, you know, testing the ground, testing the ground. Mm -hmm. And, but no, ne never directly. It took, it took a minute. And, and, and again, y'all know this, this, the history. It took us three, four years before we started making any money at all. So all throughout this time, we're doing it. And I'm getting them, them side eyes and like, oh, uh, everything all right? How everything going? And I was like, yep, everything's going all right. You know what I'm saying? So I kind of skirt around it a little bit. 
But yeah, no, I, n- I never went direct at all. E, has, talk about a time in recently where maybe the advice was to do something different and you, you took another path or, or has there been anything recently? I don't know. Nobody um, gives you any advice besides me anymore. Everybody, <laughs> yeah. You know what I'm saying? Everybody just, oh, E.T. is the greatest. I'm the only one who gives positive so feedback. Saying, so I'm saying, so you're saying that gave me advice. That well, I'm I just saying, take. like, or, or a time when you had to go against conventional wisdom, what most people thought maybe, you know what I'm saying? Because every well, once in a while you it, get that vision or you get something where you yeah. got to go against the grain and it could be unconventional. Like, I tell people all the time when they, you know, come to us at the conferences and things of that nature, like, yo, you and E, y'all left, y'all quit, y'all did this, and, like, how did your parents feel? I'm like, well, how do you, how did they feel about us, me graduating with a master's degree and then a, a business plan of putting up YouTube videos? <laughs> Not the greatest. But I understood why they didn't think it was the right, greatest. Right. But I also understood that their vision was limited. And I say their, let me, let me, let me paraphrase because right. my dad right. listens to the podcast faithfully. Right. Pops was always a believer, okay? Pops mm-hmm. was like, I don't care what y'all got going on. Y'all going to blow up. I believe in y'all. I love y'all. Pops was a believer before anybody believed, right? Uh And so I understood, though, what my mom's apprehensions were. And we've talked about it on several occasions. He had to come over and fight with my brother over the pasta and explain (laughs) to my mom why he was uh, making me quit my job. I don't know which one was worse. (laughs) <laughs> I don't know what talking about. I heard a fight with Nick over the pasta. I'm really not sure. Yeah, they shouldn't have sat y'all by each other. Um, so, but, but I understood, if you will. Like, I understood that, you know, my mom at that time probably, you know, in her 50s may not understand what this path looks like. So I think there's that moment when you have to understand. Now, certain things are always going to be wise counsel. You know, I, I think that certain rules and laws are universal, right? Like maybe as it uh, 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 you know, pertains to a marriage or parenting, like there's some advice that you know, is universal forever, right? And I'm not saying you have to follow it you know, verbatim, but, you yeah, know, but as it relates to- But it's to, universal though, it's a law. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. But, but as yeah. it relates to you know, maybe evolution of your career, right. entrepreneurship, that's the number one question people come up to me and ask like, well, everybody thinks it's a bad idea. And I'm like, they should. Like, if I told, like, like when we said we were quitting our jobs and basically giving up a 401k, a guaranteed salary at a major university that people die to work for to go put up YouTube videos, and I'm just telling you guys this. I'm not saying to do it. I'm just telling you, we did not have a business plan. There was mm-hmm. no, I didn't know how to write a business. I still don't know how to write a business plan, doggone it. No, I'm, yeah, I don't. And so... If, if from the outside looking in, if I was just an objective person on the sidelines and somebody said, what do you think about this? Good idea or not? I would be like, yo, you tripping. And so you have to understand the difference between wise counsel and the difference between you having a dream and you having a vision and you knowing what that is. Now, I love it because the pressure of getting it done then amplifies greatly. Big so there, time, was no, yeah. there was no room to fail. You know what I'm saying? Like, there's literally no room to fail. And so, E, I'm just saying, in any time in the recent history, has there ever been a decision that you made that was maybe unconventional, that wasn't what everybody yeah, thought? Last, you know yeah, what I mean? A week or two ago, when I had to change the, the structure of how we, um, you know, deal with our, our employees, you know what I'm saying? That's unconventional. Like... It's a, mm-hmm. Not only is it unconventional, see, it's unconventional for me. Let me say that so, so, so the listeners get it. Not only was it unconventional for the people who it affected and the way we've been doing business for the last however many years we've been doing it, it was unconventional to me. I didn't want to, I didn't want to heed the advice, you know, and what I mean by that is I, philosophically what I believe in the council went against it. But at the end of the day, I understood that this is the right thing to do. You know, it has nothing to do with how I feel. This is the right thing. And my gut, I don't know what my gut was saying. You know what I'm saying? Like, my gut was like, shoot, E, man, do you understand what this? But I was like, yo, I got to do this. And I know so-and-so not going to understand. And I'm just going to be transparent. You know what I'm saying? I, you, you get, you, you, I got the cause. You know, you... You get the calls where like, yo, I can't believe you did this or you betrayed me 
or what, you know what I'm saying, like what happened, you know? And some of the conversations that I had with individuals was warned. It was. It was like, yo, it's two sides to every coin. So I, I definitely understand what you're saying. I apologize 100%, but I got to take this counsel. You know what I'm saying? Flat out. I got to take this counsel because I'm looking at the long game. And this is what's going to be best, you know, for us. And, and so, I, yeah, this was just a week or so ago. I mean, I think, the, and again, I hate to be so transparent, but I think the letters went out last week. You know, so, um, but, but at the end of the day, see, I think it's not about how your parents feel or your mentor or whoever. Like, they are giving you counsel. I give my son counsel all the time. But at the end of the day, I'm not giving you a decision. That's not what I'm giving you. I'm giving you counsel so you can make a decision. That's what I'm giving you. And I, and I feel like as your mentor, as your father, as your pastor, I can't make a decision for you. But what I'm giving you is the best information that I can give you. And okay, like that's good. Said, and now that we're on the other side of that coin, let me ask you that then. So say you give Jalen information or you give him, you know, your best counsel and wisdom and he goes against that anyway. Hmm. How does that make you feel? <clears throat> honestly, well, honest, don't get, don't, yeah, no, no, give no, me no, the no, honest I'm being answer. real. When you talk to me, honestly, I feel good. Now, the only dichotomy is that, you know, he will never know what that, it's going to take him some time to know if that decision was right or wrong because he off on some feelings. You know what I'm saying? You said it, it's the gut, see? It ain't no, it, it ain't no solid rock. It ain't no anchor. You feel me? So I feel bad about maybe the consequences. Like my mom felt bad about, you get married to 19 kid and it don't work out. Like she, she was, she, her reservations were warned. Don't get it twisted. Most 19-year-olds don't make it, and it get ugly. You feel me? You divorce at 20, 21. That's hmm. ugly. And then now you are divorced. I mean, if you happen to have kids, that's a lot. And I'm not saying that people who divorce don't move on with their lives and have a healthy life, but it's collateral damage. So for my children, when they make decisions outside of my uh, counsel, I'm worried about the collateral damage. I'm not really worried about um, them bouncing back and doing well. They come from good stock. People ask me all the time, how Jalen do? I said, Jalen's doing great. He's in Atlanta. You know, he would see, like, that's like my family. He with Jeremy. Jeremy is somebody that I raised. He got Inky there. Like, these are people who, who are like, they're me. You know what I'm saying? Like, we got the same values. So I feel great about the fact that he's there. I feel great about the fact that no matter what he does, he's going to be okay. Like, He's going to be phenomenal one day. What scares me, though, and what scares every mentor and every parent or whoever is the collateral damage that might come from this, you know? And we were fortunate. I don't, I, I believe in God, but the stars also lined up. Like, you know what I'm saying? Like, it took a lot for us to, to all the stuff that has happened for us to happen for us. Man, that was, man, that, there's some celebrities with a lot of money and power and influence that don't land on their feet the way we landed on our feet. So I don't have a problem with, for real, I give you counsel, you do what you want to do. I don't. I feel very comfortable that at the end of the day, we going to be all right. But I just, what, I'm, what, I, what, what I get a little nervous about is the collateral damage that like you can't bounce back from. And we won't, you know, talk about, you know, some of the individuals that are in my family, but there have been some things that have happened to people that they couldn't shake it. They couldn't, they couldn't like, just like, oh, I, I got burned, but it didn't, you know, leave a scar. So, you no, know, I feel very comfortable, see, with, um, with our community and the way we do what we do, that the people that we mentor, even the people that have left us, see, who may have been in game changers and decided they weren't going to keep going, bro, they're going to be good. Like, if they take what we gave them, they're going to be solid. You and BU... The information you're getting, there's no way you're going to be able to get all this great information and not, you know, be successful. So, again, I just conclude with it's the collateral damage that sometimes frightens me, not, not the individual themselves. Yeah, no, and I got Jalen right here, so I'm going to just ask him to, um, to chime in because I think this is an important conversation. Mm -hmm. And, of course, Jalen is, you know, coming into his own – he's in that weird phase where it's like – 
you can't tell me what to do, but you can tell me what to do. You know what I mean? Like, <laughs> just got out of college, so it's like I just had to ask you to borrow twenty dollars like a couple months ago, and now you know he's trying to make his way. So Jalen, I know you were over there, but I know you were working on your laptop. I'm not sure if you caught much of it, but the question is really like, how do you know when to follow? wise counsel and when you just know you need to be making the decision on your own. So there's some things that, you know, you and your dad butt heads about on a regular basis. And I often get to referee those things and, and <laughs> step in and moderate, I should say. Um, but, you know, it is that difficult transition time for you and becoming a man and making your own decisions and still, you know, listening to the counsel of your father. Now, your father just so happened to be <laughs> the the number one motivational speaker in the world and one of the most trusted men in the world. And so I imagine that that, you know, um, dynamic, you know, kind of makes it even more difficult. But how do you know when to listen to your dad and say, all right, I'm, my pops is right. This is what I need to do. And when you need to buck the system and say, yo, dad, chill, I got this. Um, well, I think the first most important is I got to take all the information right now, because like you said, I'm still asking him for, st for stuff and I I'm sure when you made it, like, he don't, act, like, it's certain things that you, like, have conversations with your dad with now that you probably don't have to have, not, like, when you were little, because basically you made it, like, you got all the information that you wanted. So right now I'm in a place where it's like, okay, I know what I want to do, but I don't know, like, what it takes. So when, when the situations happen, you got to find, like, a neutral person that doesn't play, that's somebody that doesn't, like, um play a side. So you, for instance, so if I have, if me and my dad have a situation, the first person I'm going to is CJ and asking CJ because I know CJ, like, he doesn't, he doesn't like play favorites. So he's going to tell you the information. So then therefore I go and dilate what I think is right and wrong. And usually C CJ is right nine times out of 10. But I think like, I'm trying to I'm trying to like describe it in a way because I, I just got put on the spot. But basically, you have different conversations, and I think parents see them like when you're mature, and by your actions and not by what you say. And also, like if my dad talks to his dad today, it's not about look, okay, like I'm stressed, I, I got air in my tire. It's more like, oh, okay, like how was your vacation? It's it's mm -hmm. like the conversation shifts is when you mm -hmm. is when you can tell. Um, I'm trying to, I'm not bad. I'm, so new, I'm new to this podcast. Yeah, you're good. No, no, no. Yeah, you hit, saying it. hit it right on the head. Because, yeah. yeah, no, you're saying basically because you still need your dad for so much. Yeah. You know, that's actually really smart because yeah. you know you need air in your tire. You're like, I might not want to be making life decisions about who I marry or what, you know what I mean? Just like right this second, right? Like that kind of, that. that's what you're saying? Yeah. So yeah, so thanks. I appreciate it. So with that being said, it's like, you want to, like like CJ says all the time, you want your cake and eat it too. Like, I'm not asking you, okay, how can I make $200? I'm asking, can you give me $200? And I right. think when that mental mm. shift change, and I'm I'm still trying to like figure it out, I don't have it all the way, but my mental shift is okay. After every month, I'm still asking for something. Whereas I'm asking for it, but not asking like how he got it. I'm just asking for it just as a safety net. But when I like... Like Batman, like the cave when he had the rope, he kept failing. But like once he realized the rope was what was holding him back from getting to like reaching to like where he wanted to go back to save his city, that's when he realized, okay. So he started, you know what I'm saying, doing the push up, stretching. It hurt, but he had to get them kinks out. And then when he did it with the hoo hoo hot hot, he had a little <laughs> swag that gave him the rope and he tossed it to my man. It's like, go ahead and keep this. And you know, during that time, it still was like, um, like, Adversities like bats was coming out of. I'm sure it was insects. Some stones were slippery, but he he made it because he didn't have that safety net. He knew he could fail, but, and I think when you get to the point where you know you can't fail no more, like the mental shift changes. So yeah, that's what that's what I would say. That's good, Jay. Yeah, that's good. Yeah. You on your own for dinner tonight? Right. <laughs> <laughs> Hello Figure Fresh. It out. You good though? You got Hello Fresh. You, you order good? Hello Fresh. Yeah, you got nah. Hello Fresh. You don't need. You know what I'm saying? You don't need nobody. Nah, man, and it's it's crazy. And Jay says something there deep too. Get a third opinion, and here go the thing because. You two are so close, and y'all been together y'all right. whole lives. Yeah. Like, it's so funny, because he'd go off on Jay, and Jay would be pissed. Just like we had a situation, what was that, Jay, last week? And Jay came in my room, and he was like, man, oh, he was all emotional. I was like, all right, cool. I gave him about 10 minutes, and I was like, 
okay, did you look at it like this, this, and this? And he was like, oh, shoot. <laughs> I didn't even think about it. Like, like, it was literally that quick. But I think uh-huh. sometimes, you know, have, you, you said it, Jay, having that third-party advice, because it was like, okay, I'm because I, I don't have it any dog in the fight. So I have literally zero emotion as it relates. And he always says it. When your emotions are high, your reasoning is low. Mm-hmm. And so it, it it is not the best time to be trying to figure something out is when your e- emotions high. So asking somebody who doesn't have a dog in the fight, somebody who's just going to give you wise counsel, because sometimes, let's face it, even our parents can have um, an agenda, right? And like, so it's always good to find yeah. somebody who doesn't have an agenda. So um, yeah, no, that was good. Thanks I for said, that, Jay. I, I said, yeah, see, for just to add real quick, I'm saying, your, your parents by nature, man, and you can speak to this a little more because you're on the other side of it, but as a parent by nature, you're trying to protect your kid from everything. You know what I'm saying? Like, you don't want them to fall. You don't want them to do this. Like, you're trying to protect them. So how do you transition out of that? Like, I'm watching you about to make a decision that, again, I don't even know what's going to happen, but because my job yeah. is to protect you, I'm about to come up with something. Hey, you might not want to do this because this could happen or this could happen. You know what I'm saying? Uh-huh. And that's why every time Jalen leave the house, I say, hey, don't get nobody pregnant. That's it, <laughs> right. You know what I'm saying? It's hey, you think I'm being funny? I used to tell from. him and Kel every time they left the house, all right, cool, yeah, y'all be good. Don't get nobody pregnant. I'm just saying yeah. because, the, like, like Ian and I always talk about, like, yo, we can bounce back from you crashing up the car a little oh, bit, a little dent right, in the car. Right. We can come back from, you know, a lot of stuff. And we come, of course, you can come back from having a kid too. I'm just saying certain things that you know are going to alter the dynamic so heavily. So that's oh, yeah, a good question, yeah, E. Like, yeah. I, and that's well, why, well, you know, I had yeah. you know, I had to have a, a conversation with Kale. I'm like, bro, I'm not sponsoring you walking off a cliff. You know what I'm saying? You want to jump uh, off right. a cliff and you got a parachute right. and you got right. it all planned out, go for right. it. But go I can't sponsor it. that. You know what I'm Absolutely. saying? And, and I wish you nothing but the best, but how do you balance that, E? Uh, what, okay, because you know at some point, I'm telling you, with Trey, E18, he getting ready to do I'm jumping in. Like, get, get in the car. <laughs> get in the car, I'll still beat you uh, down. Oh, no question. I, you know what? I, I think, you know, you have to know, you know, your children. And one thing I know about Jalen, Jalen, since he was a child, like we'd go out as a family, he'd always, he would always venture off. You know what I'm saying? So he ain't never been the type of person who listens. You know, uh, he, he's always been the person who has to test it for himself. And I understand that, whether he, knew, he knows it or not. He, he, he doesn't listen. So when I say something, I'm not even saying it for him to listen because I know Jalen is a kid that has to burn his hand. It's just who he is. He got to burn his hand. So for me, it's always just been, okay, God, do me a favor. When he burn his hand, don't, don't, don't let him burn his body. And when he burn his hand, don't let him burn his hand to the point where he can't use it no more. Mm. But I know my son, he got to get burned. He, you can't tell him nothing. And, it, and, and, and what people have to hear is, I'm not saying it in a negative. People may be hearing it in a negative. It's not the negative. We all learn differently. He is a, whatever you call it, experimental learning learner. He has to experience it for himself. And then once he experiences it, he like, oh, it's real. My prayer has always been, God, don't let him experience it to the point where he don't get a second experience. You feel me? Because mm. there have been people who have experimented with uh, one, man, yeah, one thing, and, right. And, and they didn't come back from it. Yeah. So, like, I've never been afraid of, like, you know, kids, my son or, you know, my well, my son, my daughter's different, but my son, like, maybe drinking or something. I, bruh, if I could guarantee you a drink and it was just a college experience, I'd love it. But I'm afraid that you start drinking and then you become a drunk. You feel me? Like, that's, that's what I'm afraid of. So with Book, it's never been... I want to tell you what to do or I want to stop you from getting hurt. No, I actually want you to get hurt because once you get hurt, ain't nobody got to tell you a second time. I just don't want you to get in the kind of hurt that you can't bounce back from. You Mm. feel me? Or the type of hurt that's going to uh, last forever. I look at my mom and no disrespect to my mom. She listens. She probably going to kill me. But my mom, unfortunately, didn't have me. You know, she didn't get pregnant at 17 years old, had me at 18, and just went on her her merry way. Like, yo, for real. And my mom's coming out with her book. I've had a chance to read it. Yo, that, 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 if you ever heard a soul tie before, like, yo, my mom, my mom didn't have me and had that, you know, the book is going to reveal some stuff. But she held on to that 
experience for a long time, Carl. You know yeah. what I'm saying? It wasn't like my mom had me and it was just like, oh, I had a son. We're just going to move on with our lives as if nothing happened. My mom was bitter, bro. My mom held on to that. And, and so when you're, when, you, when you're bitter... That bitterness, if you're not careful, she well, was your strong. life. Yeah, that it could be your life, bro. Could be your whole life. Yeah, your whole life. life. Yeah. And there are people who have, you know, dated somebody, and let's just be real. They've gotten married, but they still holding on to that person they got with the first time. And so some of us, bro, it just, you know, it just don't work for us. So for Jalen, I'm the opposite parent. I have always wanted Jalen to bust his head. I just didn't want him to, to bleed to death. I didn't want it. And why? Because the difference between him and his sister, his sister will go to the, she'll go close, but once she sees that it's danger, she, Jada like, I'm good with that. I, my mom and dad told me don't do it. I did have to see a little bit, but once I saw, you know what I'm saying, like the shadow, Boog, like, I, he got to jump in the pool. Boog got to jump all in it. Like, <laughs> they told me it was wet. I don't believe him, no. I'm about to jump off in this joint myself and put water on my head. I got to have it all on my body. And my prayer has always been, Lord, just don't let him drown. That's all. Don't let him drown. Because if he can get out that water when it's wet, I promise you he'll never jump back in it again. But he's just the kind of kid that's got to experience it himself. That's all. Hmm. Uh, and you know what you got to experience for yourself? Organifi. No Organifi, baby. You got to experience <laughs> Organifi for yourself, man. We have been having some amazing results, and I just wanted to read a couple of the uh, testimonials from some people, man. You guys have been sending in some awesome emails. Listen, man, people are going to the next level with Organifi. All right, Mike in Nebraska said, please never stop this podcast, guys. I look forward to my Friday afternoon commute every week because of you guys. I also want to thank you for getting me hip to Organifi. My wife and I have been trying to juice every day, but it was so hard to stay consistent. After hearing you guys talk so much about it, I decided to try it and it's been incredible. I drink two a day and I feel much more focused and energized, going to try the other products as well. But for now, the green juice is a staple. Grayson in Rochester, New York said, guys, Organifi is the truth. Been on the green juice powder and the gold for a few months now and I feel great. Just wanted to thank you guys for giving us the heads up on this awesome product. Jessica in Fayetteville said, I wasn't going to try Organifi and I'm not usually one of those people who actually goes and orders stuff off a podcast recommendation, but after CJ's awesome segues and convincing delivery, <laughs> I decided to give it a shot and wow, it's been a real lifesaver. I feel more energized and it forces me to stay hydrated throughout the day. Love you guys so much. Uh, all right. Yeah. Appreciate y'all for that, man. And um, yeah, listen, if you want to try Organifi, listen, just go to the website, put in the code. We're giving you a discount. All right. It's easy. All right. So go to Organifi.com, O-R-G-A-N-I-F-I.com. Put in the promo code success. All right. And get 20% off your order. We're giving you 20. Is it 20, Carl? 20%. It's 20%. Yeah. Uh, that, that's a huge percentage, and just try it. And I'm telling you, you're going to love it. If you've been trying to juice every day, and you got your green vegetables all in there, and you smashing it up, and it comes out, and it's messed up, and you waste some of it, and you use some of it, and you're trying to pack it up and getting all messy everywhere, listen, get the Organifi. It's like a crystal light package. Boom, tear off the top, drink it, your water down a little bit, put it in your water bottle, shake it up, and go, and I promise you the best thing about it, it actually tastes good, all right? It's got a little sweet mint kind of flavor to it, maybe. Um, it's delicious, man. So check it out, Organifi.com, promo code SUCCESS. And um, yeah, let us know how you like it. Send us an email, let us know how you like it. Uh, we're getting low on time here, so let's get into a couple questions. Uh, let's see, let me find it. I for, uh, let's see. Oh, shout out to... Um, well, I'm trying to find this. Shout out to Huddy. Did y'all see Huddy got a hole in one yesterday? Yes. Unbelievable. That boy. Yes. Yeah, yeah. yeah that, that, that kid is something else. Hole in one, his first ever hole in one. His dad said he'd been trying to Did get you see one for smile? 37 years. Oh, Did he you was see geeked. A smile? He was geeked. <laughs> I felt like he was doing a commencement. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Was, I felt yeah, no doubt. He was no doubt. Doing a commencement. No doubt. He was definitely geeked. Um, so, yeah, man. Shout out to you, Huddy. Great job, buddy. Proud of you, man. And uh, keep rocking, all right? All right, Lawrence in Seattle said, uh, I've always wanted to pursue life as an entrepreneur, but I have a very nice, high-paying job that isn't bad, but it's not what I'm passionate about. 
My wife also isn't very supportive. How did you guys get your wives behind your Don't dreams? Don't say that. Don't say mm. that. And mm. when Don't do I that. know to keep grinding or, or give up? So he's saying his wife is not supportive. Don't say she's not supportive. Don't she's say supportive that. Supportive in she, her own way. Uh, she's supportive right. of that good paying job you got now. <laughs> right. You know what I'm saying? Right. Her focus is supportive <laughs> elsewhere. Right, right. You know right. what I'm saying? Right. Go for it, E. What, what you think? I'm just saying, uh, you know, you, uh, you say it, see, people get so emotional, bruh. Like, people get so emotional, and what they don't realize is when you get emotional, man, you just, you're not thinking. You know, you get, you're so selfish. That's what it is. You get so selfish. And I, I've been there. I'm not throwing stones. I'm telling you from experience. I used to be like, DD ain't support me. And it's like, I had to sit in the mirror one day and say, what do you mean she ain't supporting you? She got a job. She helping pay rent. Like, what does that mean? She's not supporting you. She what you meant home, to say was cheerleader. Right. Mm. It feel, that's, that's what my man is saying. She not your, she not cheering on your hookup. And Didi, they, as a matter of fact, it's so funny. The, um, uh, you know, Quest marriage call every Sunday. Uh, Didi is his co. I don't know how Quest get the support that we didn't get. Uh. But she, call, she on every week, you know. And, and, the, and the joke, the running joke with the girls, they're like, they're about to come out with a T-shirt that Didi says, I'm not your cheerleader, I'm your coach. Mm. And, you know, that's mm. what I had to realize for myself, bro. It's like, yo, Didi was critiquing my messages. And, and she said it. I'm not critiquing you because I'm trying to dog you. Like, I'm, I got invested interest. I'm mm -hmm. critiquing you because the better <laughs> you are, sure. the more money we're going to yeah, make. Right, you right. You know what I'm saying? So she like, if you're a buster, that's going to affect us. Not only financially, I'm going to be walking through the streets looking stupid because you out here giving these bold messages. You know? <laughs> so she was like, yo, I, I have invested interest. And you have to see it like this, she used to say. It's like a football game. You might be playing offense and I'm playing defense. We're on the same team. Hmm. We, we, we ain't both playing offense, though. You playing offense, murdering it. Uh, when do I'm I get to go on offense murdering. and coach? That's all I want to know. Because <laughs> <Right. That's> some <laughs> kind of way, when I start coaching, it don't feel like we're on the same team. That's all I'm saying. When I, when I go Phil Jackson, it don't oh, seem like the triangle offense oh, quite work like it's I supposed try, to. I, I try not to do it often, bro, because it's a disaster in my house. Apparently, I didn't go to school for coaching. Uh, and I don't know how to do it. You know what I'm saying? Uh, I went to school to be told what to do, mm -hmm. not what to tell what to do. So, <laughs> I, I, and I'm being real with, with, with the young man. Here, yeah. Here's why this is so important. Once I changed my focus and realized, yo, I'm putting up the points, but she's stopping the other team from scoring. All of a sudden, it was like, it, I mean, it was the same situation, but everything changed in terms of my excitement. I was pumped up. You know, I was happy because I was like, yo, she's been supporting me all this time. And here I am, silly am I. We got two kids. She, when they're not on the road with me and they're at home, she taking care of the kids so I can speak. She making sure the credit score's hot. She, she balancing the bank account. So you got to be careful just because people are not sponsoring you or supporting you hmm. in the way you want them. It doesn't mean they're not supporting you. And what I challenge you to do if you're listening is to write down 10 or 20 ways she is supporting you, and I want you to focus more on that right. and not on the fact that she's not supporting you. Oh, that's good. Um, well, we had a guest speaker on the BU call the other night, which was whew, phenomenal. Mm. Fire. Yeah, We're shout fire. out to Tiffany, who just bla Man, listen, if you're not in BU, I'm not going to do no pitch. If you're not in BU, get in BU, doggone it. We had a fire guest speaker on Thursday night. Bruh, I, I made my mother, see, I made my mother stop and listen. I'm like, I don't care what you got going on. Like, Tamisha, all y'all, come here, sit down and listen to this. I'm like, it's only about 30 minutes. We did Q&A after. But yeah, yeah, that sucker changed my life, y'all. Yeah. But, but what she was saying, too, on the other hand is, she said, I think she was telling uh, YB or one of our other students, you oh, have yeah, to know yeah, how yeah. to be supportive. Yeah. You know what yeah. I'm saying? The, like, yeah. Yeah. and that's kind of the other side of the coin is like, you might think supportive is like, hey, great job and this and that, or asking them, or you know what I mean? Like, everybody wants to be supported in a different way. So I think there needs to be an expectation of balance on both sides to where one mm. person understands what support looked like, what's nagging looked like. Nagging ain't supporting. You know what I'm saying? So yeah, what yeah. you're talking about e, is, you know, actual like leadership in terms of, you know, uh, the the doing, right? Like looking out for the credit score, paying the bills, making sure the kids, like that's that's a different type of 
leadership and support, whereas some people might need that verbal support, whatever, depending on what your love language is. So I just thought about um, our call on third. <laughs> Does that really matter, see? Um, what your love yeah, language is? Yeah. <laughs> hey, what, 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 what is needed, your love I, language? I'm By just the way, saying, what I, is I it? Thought I, need, I thought I needed affirmation, but I wasn't. That's your love none. language? Words of affirmation? You know yours, I, Carl? I don't know I'm mine. not sure that's mine. I, I have I'm, a good feeling, but I don't you. know it. Yeah, I don't know yeah. mine. Yeah, I think mine's is touch, see, to be honest with you. I think, I think, I think, you know what I'm saying? The I return touch. of grown <laughs> man gifts. I just think last time just I tested. Just a touch yeah. of love. A little yeah, I bit. Think, I just just a touch, touch of love. Yeah, uh, I think it's touch. Uh, uh, yeah. And then words of affirmation. <laughs> no, I'm just going to touch exclusively. Uh, no exclusive doubt. touch. Y'all, uh, man, y'all are... <laughs> Y'all tripping. Um, let's I just see. told you what the assessment was. My <laughs> man gave five, and that, I'm not give giving. I'm not, you know, I'm not give. I'm not work. Work is probably my last one. Probably, I'm not even have on the radar for work. But yeah, touch is definitely my. I think I was 98, 9, 98.9% hey, touch. Uh, grown man gifts T-shirts coming soon. Yes, if sir. You get, get one for the special man in your life. Uh, we will have the T-shirts. I'll put them up on the site. Y'all can get them. Uh, and, and the physical touch, as you love language, we'll get one of those T-shirts as well. <laughs> uh, Gary Chapman. Uh, <laughs> Gary Chapman. Uh, Tell Gary we'll put a little royalty check together for him for that one. And I appreciate Gary throwing that in there. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? No doubt. Gary, Gary thought he was slick, didn't he? <laughs> Gary threw that in there. Yeah, and the last one is just touch. You just, just want to Hey, no, no. He said physical touch. Let's be specific. That's what he said. Yeah. Yeah. Touch. Yeah. Um, all right, let's get one more in here, man. Y'all play too much, I swear. <laughs> uh, Angie in Orlando said, I love the podcast and totally subscribe to your method of getting things done, but I'm having a challenge with work-life balance. Do you guys have a method of gauging how to yes. create balance, especially when you have small kids and a spouse that works? We got a whole curriculum, Carl. We can't, I mean, if C1 tried to tackle that question, he can, but we've actually just put a phenomenal curriculum together because we've heard this time and time again. Uh, I think it's probably a three-month uh, program. I think we're going to probably make it available on um, our BU platform, but, you know, we have something. Uh, we have something. Uh, I don't know. What's the, what was the, uh, what is it, a Facebook or is it an Instagram the S2S, where, what is that, Instagram, is that Instagram, Instagram. Yeah. So S2S go to Instagram. podcast. Yeah, go to that. And, and we're going to put, Carl will post something with the work-life balance coming soon and give us a date. But we have it. It's thorough. It's finished. It's done. And I think um, this is such a complex topic that you're really going to have to go through the worksheets and, and, and you and your spouse together or your family together and make sense of your dynamics. And it's going to give you a couple of suggestions, you know, that you need to move forward. So... Yep, 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 yep. Breatheuniversity.com. Check us out. Yeah. Uh, okay, that's it. Um, is that a jingle? Is that the jingle for nah. it? You never had one. <laughs> hey, is that it? Yeah, that, that it can be. Listen, man, yeah. BU is, I'm telling you, it is funner than ever. It is oh, man, um, just phenomenal. a blast, man. We're getting on the yeah. line every single week. What are y'all waiting for? Go sign up, man. Check us out. It's uh, affordable, man, and, and nowhere else can you get connected to a community like this, man. And, and nowhere else can you get connected to ET. So when people see me, oh, yeah. hey, E, I want your number. Uh -huh. I said, look, hey, you in BU? I, I, I can't do it. You I told, I got every, you. Hey, I told everybody on the customer service side of things, like if anybody asks for E, CJ, Josh, anybody, Jamal. Jamal, that remember from the podcast. I'm yep, like, the first yep. question you ask them is, are you and BU? No offense, y'all, but we get so many requests. Like, you got to put some kind of cap on yeah, it. So I can't, right. I'm saying, I'm just saying, this is what I tell people. I wake up, it's God, myself, my wife, my family, my ETA family, BU. I, bro, I, I, don't, I can't get to you. Not that I don't want to get to you, but we got so many students that, of course, right, they're right. first priority. It is yep. what it is. Yeah, and this show is so fun seeing them out on the road, man. They come out to the conferences with the T-shirts on. And yep. It's like a family, man. We try to do as many meetups as we can. And, uh, yeah, be you. That's, uh, yeah, go go sign up, man. Go check us out, breatheuniversity.com. All right, um, announcements. We got Phenomenal Life Jamaica. Y'all better hurry Ooh, up because... Yeah. I saw the uh, Facebook page. Did y'all see it? 
Oh, oh, yeah. oh yeah, fair five. Tay posted. took a work yeah. trip to Jamaica to go to check Jamaica. out the oh, no to oh, go check out the facility oh, to make sure foul. it was. I'm oh, like Tay, is that is that a who who foul. else is on this work trip? I'm like, how did you get <laughs> Tay got a work trip to go oh, scout the location? I could tell by the way she was going that her heart wasn't pure. It was like she wasn't saying nothing about it. She was keeping oh, it on man. the low low. Uh, and yeah. then she posting pic like, uh-huh. look, we. I, a long time ago, I sat down with her and tried to oh, give yeah. her yeah, the I not get that. hated decorum. Yeah. Yeah. I tried, see? She it don't didn't, listen. It didn't work. It don't work, bro. So she'll go to, like, Jamaica or something and take all these pics and wonder why her friend's hating her guts. Mm. And, and you know what I'm saying? I'm like, I try to tell you there's a way mm. to do it. And pictures that I saw, it looked nothing like I'm on a business trip trying to decide. Oh, I'm talking the, about nothing has, like I'm like, I'm what does about. you being at the spa have to do with whether we I'm decide or nothing. Uh, yeah. nothing, bro. Shout out Bless to Tay Tay. For they shall see Jamaica. To me and Tay Tay. <laughs> me and Tay Tay going to have to you know answer some questions at the pearly gates about our motives. About our motives. Me and Tay Tay <laughs> up there trying to explain. <laughs> see what had happened was. Yeah, oh, um, but PhenomenalLifeJamaica.com, man, we want y'all to come join us. It's going to be a blast. Shout out to everybody who was on the cruise. I think everybody from the cruise is coming to Jamaica. Uh, so it's going fast, man. And don't come to us fast crying and, and complaining when it's gone or when the junior suites are gone or when the presidential suite, when he got all the presidential suites with insiders oh, locked up. And, and don't come complaining hotel, to me. And see in Motel 6 with uh, the roaches. Carl and, and I will be, Carl and I, we we'll gonna be, be with our families jump in, in the middle of Kingston. Don't jump uh, in on that car. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Pure. Keep it like that car. And the shot. Don't let me pull you into that uh, knob. You are Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Hey, misery loves company, baby. Um, also, man, Boston, May 20th. We'll be there a couple weeks now. So Boston, still a few tickets left there if you want to come check us out in Boston for the Take Control. Uh, shout out to Josh, Jamal, Maya, all the rest of the crew, Josh Letts, everybody else who uh, comes and participates with that, man. Just a great day uh, out there in Boston, May 20th. And then June 24th? Oh. June 24th, St. Louis, all right? Uh, the, the, the lunatics were coming your way um, to rock with you guys in St. Louis. Looking forward to that. With my Air Force Ones. With the Air Force <laughs> Ones. Uh, shout out Nelly. Uh, we'll be in uh, St. Louis. So looking forward to, to that as well. Uh, man, if you're an entrepreneur, uh, a wantrepreneur, um, you know, just looking to go to that next level in your company, whatever, man, come check us out at the Take Control Tour. And, uh, yeah, we're going to get rocking. Anything else, Carl? Anything I missed? No, you got it. That's it. Anything yeah, you else you would like game. me to say besides yeah, hey. LBJ hey. is the GOAT? Anything uh, else hey. you guys want to discuss? Uh, yeah, yeah. Oh, no qu- <laughs> hey, no questions asked about that. LBJ is definitely a GOAT. There's no question. No man can <laughs> deny that. He's a GOAT. Yeah. yeah, he's a GOAT. Yeah, no man <laughs> can deny that. Yeah, he is a GOAT. No man can deny that. But C, I yeah. want you to I want you to explain to the audience. Mm-hmm. I'm getting close, y'all. I'm not there yet. The couch ain't make it yet. Oh. But can you tell them about that light you saw, C? Uh, the, bruh, okay. I'm trying to figure out how y'all about to have a $2 million house in the $300,000 neighborhood. I just, <laughs> oh, bruh. I, oh, the light. I no. didn't see the light today, Carl. Jalen asked me if I saw it. I said, bruh, they, no, I'm not even on the light. The e, the inside of E House looked like the W Hotel. Bruh, it's a I'm whole like, different, bruh, yeah. Where, I'm like, you walk in, I'm like, what is this? I'm like, what are y'all trying to pull off here in Grand Ledge? I'm like, this is unbelievable. Grand Ledge. Hey, oh, see, it, Mike, it Mike said to me, Mike said to me, Carl, I was chilling with Mike the other day. It's East neighbor, y'all. And Mike was like, man, you know if E went around here, we'd be like the G's of the neighborhood. <laughs> oh, no doubt. But e messing it up for all of us. Mike like, yo, we'd be I'm rolling actually, so deep I'm out increasing here. the value, bro. I got the kids working. I got all the kids in the working class. You know what I'm saying? They like, what is poverty. this? <laughs> they like, what is this uh, $4 million house doing planted in the middle of Grand Ledge? Yeah. Hey, you nah, know what? Don't see, it's going to even up because he don't water his grass. It's going even out in a month or two. Oh, yeah. His grass gonna oh, be yeah, like no desert oh, storm. I I got Wait, y'all that. ain't watering his grass for the man while he gone? <laughs> oh, he, hey, oh, he, he talking about while I'm here. Yeah, he don't water that joint. <laughs> oh, why you, oh, why you there? Yeah, yeah. While I'm here. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, uh, you ain't uh, got you don't got a hose? 
Uh, I'm not going to put all that care money. I don't about it. I'm, not put, I'm spending all that money. It's kids in Africa without water. We so spoil in America. <laughs> we water our, we spend, put water on our grass so it could be greener. I'm so, not, I'm not months, subscribing to that. For two months, though. Yeah, I'm though, not hey. subscribing to that. Yeah, yeah. That's so, real. So, Carl, I noticed last time I was there, your yard was looking really good. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. We, Carl we been trying, doing his thing. He we got trying to do a little something. Yeah. You got a green thumb over there is what I'm finding out? I'm, I, I won't necessarily say all that. I pay a true green to come out with their green thumb and make it make sure it look green. Oh, uh, let me tell you and something. make it rain. Yeah, no, I'm not fooling with true green. Yeah, no, Uh-oh. I'm not. Uh-oh, what mm-hmm. happened? No, I just, I found somebody to do it for less and do a better oh, job. You. So I'm rolling with my squad. Well, yeah. hey, what I did is I cut back on True Green. Sorry, True Green, because they had like the 40, the 40, uh, what do you call it? The 40 application plan, the 30 application plan. They got like a million plans. I'm like to the bare minimum. Just give me the grass green and my kids ain't going to get cut when they're playing on it. Right. That's what I'm saying. They, they got a better formula. Give me that. What are you, you right. talking about the 30? I want the, uh, the, 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 uh. the platinum. Give me the platinum. Yeah. So. yeah, give me the one where you don't have to tell me the Chinese bug is here this year. <laughs> right. And the Chinese bug just came in. And, and the you got to put a special application eat, on it. Oh, because it's going to eat all your shrubbery and it's going to come in <laughs> and eat Diddy Light and get on her couch. Yeah, hey, yeah, no, no, no. See, I, I'll give you one. And I, I, I promise I'm not dogging y'all out, True Green. But they called me one time. I said they're looking at an aerial map. And the tree, and you notice, the tree at the back of my house, like, they need to do something with it because it seems to be infested with something. I'm yeah. like, boo, I'm not sure what game you playing. I don't have no trees around my house. So unless right. you got the wrong mm. address or the wrong number, yeah. like, I ain't got time for games. Yeah. Like, you got, you got the yeah. wrong one. I'm like, yeah, don't play games with me. Oh, yeah. Wow, so they told you it was a tree that was A infested. tree, bro. A, a tree, tree around yeah. my house that looking at this yeah. aerial map and based on the map, they know that this area is infested and they yeah. need to and put some tree. They're going to get the pearly gates with They're going to get the pearly gates with They're going to be right there. They're going to be right uh, there at that tight. gate. With the, yeah. with the modestly yeah. pure heart. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Yeah. With the almost pure heart. Uh, almost, yeah. yeah. You know what I'm saying? Uh, I'm going to be right over there with everybody who straddled the yeah. fence. Uh, <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Can, can we straddle the pearly gates? <laughs> oh, it's going to be right. It's going to be a bunch of us right there. E, give us the nugget of the day, man, so we can get up out of hey, here and get some work done. Hey, let me tell y'all something, man. The nugget of the day, guys, for real, bro. Let's be honest about LeBron. Let me tell you something, you, guys, you got to get to the point where you fall in love with your craft, that you honor your craft so much. I didn't even get to watch the game. Y'all know I'm an early, uh, 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 go to bed early, I rise early. I saw LeBron James with, I don't know how many seconds were left in the game, take the ball inbounds, walk the ball down. He didn't even shoot the ball. He did something with the wrong hand and threw the ball against the backboard and the backboard, it was like a Gatorade commercial, and the ball went in, game over. He steps up on top of the uh, 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 scores and screaming and hollering at the fans, busting his chest. Listen to me, guys. You got to honor your craft to the point where you get so much control of it, you know, and that's the problem with a lot of you right now because you're not great at what you do. You have absolutely no control. You don't have control of your vacation time. You don't have control of your day, when you own, when you off. You don't have control, like, of your finances, how much you get paid. You can't get an increase if you want to. And I, bro, I'm challenging you. What I saw, um, just this whole playoff series with LeBron, I'm telling you, I challenge you to invest $1.5 million in yourself. What, like, and you're like, yeah, I ain't got $1.5 You're acting stupid. No, no, no. Invest in a book, $15 in a book. Invest $120 in a professional development series. You know, in, invest in a mentor, uh, whatever. I, you, I'm just saying make an investment in yourself so you can have complete control. And when I saw, when I saw that and the way the Toronto Raptors players, like the look on the, like they saw, uh, uh, I, I thought a putty cat. I thought I saw, I did, I did see a putty cat. I'm telling you, watching LeBron and what he's doing in these playoffs, and in this, what, 15th year, whatever year this is for him, he has absolute, complete control of the game, of the, of the best game in, in NBA in terms of basketball, best in the world. And this dude is operating at the highest of the highest of levels, and it's looking like it's easy for him. And so if you want your life to be easy for once, 
If you're tired of being controlled, when to get up. They making you get up at six in the morning to drive to work. Some of you guys are driving hours to and fro to work and it's because you are operating average or you good. I challenge you to get to that level. Look, we, here's what I say. You could, we could talk about all day who's the best, but you're going to talk about who's the best when they are the best. Like the only way you can compare the greats is they have to be great. And I'm challenging you not just to watch it because when I watch it in action, y'all, when I watch Steph Curry come back to the game and shoot a 34-foot shot like he on the playground somewhere and he playing against grown men, I'm like, what control? And so I'm challenging you to get that control if you're an engineer. I'm challenging you to get that kind of control if you're a teacher. I'm challenging you to get that kind of control if you're a surgeon, if you're an engineer, if you're a janitor, if you're an entrepreneur. I challenge you to get to the point where we can say, we can fuss. I'm talking about we can fight. You the best janitor. You better than uh, Charlie Joe Smith in uh, in 62. When he, I'm I'm challenging y'all for real. Not just to watch greatness in action. I challenge you to become greatness in action because when you do, I promise you, you're going to have a different, different life. So it's your boy E.T. saying, don't watch the GOAT, become a GOAT. Hey, appreciate that nugget of the day. Y'all go to iTunes, leave us that review. We'll see you next week. I want you to focus on here right now. Don't you worry about when you get home. You make this, you concentrate on this opportunity. You don't worry about tomorrow. You concentrate on this opportunity with all your might, with all your